Hey YouTube, this is Donnie Smith and I'm back with another Q&A. In this video, we're going to talk about Seam Sealer. Alright, so you can do it too says, thanks for sharing this information. At some point, would you mind discussing Seam Sealer and which type of joints it would be used on? Most is obvious, but I see people use it in places that do not make sense. Sometimes the obvious is not so obvious. So some examples from some of your projects would be great. Thanks. And I appreciate you for asking this question and, uh, you know, watching my videos and all of you, you know, all of you that watch and, and have questions or comments. I appreciate that. And uh, talk about seam sealers. Basically, seam sealers uh, designed to go uh, over two different panels, two different joints, and uh, basically seal them. Uh, where no moisture and things like that doesn't get in, you know, it helps from corrosion protection. So really, you know, anywhere one panel overlaps another, um, you know, it's a candidate for seam sealer. For example, you know, where a door panel, you know, the outer door panel, that flange bends around the shell. Well, right there is a, you know, that's somewhere that moisture could get in. So usually that is seam sealed. Or where a quarter panel laps over, you know, on the edges, on the flanges, you know, that could be used with a, Seam sealer could be used for that. Basically, any joint, you know, structural or non-structural areas, that's not going to be too visible. And what I mean by that, if you're sectioning in a quarter panel roof, and uh, you're sectioning along the cell panel there, I mean, you would see seam sealer if you applied it. So you need to do something that makes it invisible. You know, more of an invisible repair where you don't see anything. So what you're going to do in a case like that, you know, you would weld it. You know, grind it. Uh, I usually apply some fiberglass, you know, some chopped fiberglass, like uh, kitty hair or something like that. I don't use that brand, but, and then uh, not just to help seal it, make sure, you know, it seals proper. Uh, not everybody uses that, but, and then I'll apply some body filler, you know, sand it out, prime it, block it. Then when you, after you paint it, you'll never know that, you know, any seam was there. So in a case like that, you know, seam sealers, you know, not going to be used where it's really visible. But really, anywhere else where two panels join, you know, uh, I'd probably use seam sealer. And a lot of places, you know, like you take tail lights out and areas like that that's in there where you don't see good, uh, you know, you're not going to be, it's not going to be visible all the time or real visible. You know, seam sealer is applied in there from the factory and, you know, we reapply it in the aftermarket. Anywhere it was applied from the factory, you know, we usually apply it. And basically what we're wanting to do is just keep moisture from getting in between those two panels. So traditionally, seam sealer really need to be applied, you know, not on top of the metal, but over primer. Um, I think the, the most recommended is like epoxy primer. You know, you spray that on there, let it dry, and then put your seam sealer. And then you can paint on top of that. Uh, probably a 2K primer would work fine. I don't really think etch primer, that it's recommended that you put that over etch primer because, you know, the acid etch primer, I don't know if it's, it'll stick like it should. But a 2K or epoxy primer, you know, and then apply your seam sealer. Now, 3E and I'm sure other brands have came out with a seam sealer. You know, it's a direct to metal. You know, you can put this seam sealer straight onto the metal, you know, if it's a metal surface. The, the trick, though, this is the trick, is trying to make it look original, you know, like OEM. Uh, that, that's where we've had a lot of challenges, you know. And some tips for that is uh, maybe a putting, applying tape. And uh, using that to make a straight edge, smoothing it out. Uh, you know, I've put gloves on and smoothed it, smoothed it out with my finger to make it look smooth. They've also got the streak look, which you might have to get a brush and kind of brush it to give it that streak look. Um, also, you can use low pressure and air gun if it's got that textured look, just to kind of give it a little bit of a texture. You blow uh, the compressed air onto the seam sealer. And that'll kind of give it that texture like factory. Uh, there, there's some different tricks out there, but trying to make it look like the factory, like if you're matching one side to the other. I mean, of course, you want it to look the same. You want it to look factory. And that that's the challenge sometimes. I know I was at a 3M class, and what they're uh, starting to recommend to use for a lot of their, their uh, seam sealing is their flexible plastic repair because that flows out real good, nice and smooth. And there are some areas that are visible, like on a... I know my Titan, my Nissan Titan, you know, where it joins the roof, joins like to the quarter panel, you know, it laps over there. At the factory, you know, they have seam sealer, it just kind of fills in, it looks like one piece. Well, what they're doing is they're putting that flexible repair in there and it flows out, 
and then they can paint on top of that and it looks like it did from the factory. One more thing I want to mention though, you know, we're really using less seam sealers because uh, all the panel bond these days. You know, you're putting the panel bond to put like door skins and things on and that's on the flange and you're actually having some of that ooze out of the, the edge there and then you know you can wipe that off and that's already sealed. There's really no need to come back, in my opinion, to come back with seam sealer whenever that has a, a seal from the 8115. You know, that's going to prevent any moisture or anything like that getting in. So in areas where you're using panel bond, it may, you know, it may not be as necessary to use a seam sealer. Well, I hope that helps answer your question uh, without, you know, being more specific or let me know like uh, what you're referring to. Like, you know, where have you seen it used uh, that you have in question? You know, I might could better help you. Or if someone out there, you know, there's a lot of knowledgeable people that watch these videos too. You know, shoot us a comment, leave it below. You know, you can help answer these questions as well. And that's what's great about here on YouTube. I mean, we get a lot of comments, feedback, and, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, I get the questions, you know, someone helps answer these questions, and, you know, from a different perspective, from a, you know, different opinion and things like that. And that's great. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure and give us a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you in the next video.